Vivo 15 tutorial for Mac. I'm going to introduce the parts of the NVivo workspace. I'm going to talk about how to import files and how to browse files and then how to put them into folders. And then I want to talk about how control click or right click is your best friend. So let's get started. First, the workspace. Um, the first vertical column here in dark blue is called navigation view. And here's where you'll find uh, your files stored under data, all different kinds of files. You'll find your codes. If you have cases that you've identified, they'll be here. Memos or notes you'll find in this column as well, as well as the output of queries and visuals. At the very bottom of this, of this column is a little I. This is your project log, and it, there's nothing in it right now, but it shows um, anything that has been exported and imported into, into the file. And if there is a problem, this I will turn into an exclamation point. At the top of the screen, horizontally, is the familiar uh, menu ribbons. And these are where you'll do a lot of the actions uh, within NVivo. And for those who are familiar Mac users, you also find an NVivo ribbon at the very top of your screen, which won't be visible in this video, that has almost all the same um, items, like edit, import, create, explore, share, and so forth. I have some files already imported, so I'm going to open up those surveys. And they're going to appear to you in what's called list view right here to, in the next column at right. If I open one of these files by double clicking, I'll open the Denise file, um, it appears in the next column, which is called detail view. Uh, this is where you can read files. Um, you can actually edit the, the content of a file by clicking on the little edit button in the ribbon up here above. So if I click this, I could actually change the text and or put it back. Um, there are other important coding uh, tools here, coding stripes and highlighting coding, which we can talk about. And you can actually code from this stripe as well. So if I highlight a bit of text here, you see that the code, the light bulb, the little yellow light bulb turns yellow. You can code from there. The other thing that you that you want to notice is at the top of this ribbon, we have the title of each of the files that's open. So if I, I can open multiple files at a time, and, you, and you'll see the, the other files that are not active right now sort of peeping up behind. Let's see if I can get Giovanni to open. Yep. So uh, if you want to close a file, it's just as simple as uh, clicking the X. That's how you close them. And just want to notice here at the bottom, um, this is called the status bar at the very bottom. And it shows how your files are hierarchically stored, like um, this Denise file is, date, is in the data section, and then in the files folder, and the surveys fo fo subfolder, and then here we have the file. Okay, so let, let's see if we can import um, a file to show you how to do that. Obviously, it's not surprising that one way to do this is to use the Import tab and go to Files. Um, this time I'm going to import one of the surveys, so it's going to be a doc. It's going to be a document. It lets me search for that out on my desktop. I've got it over here to the top, and you see it here. So I'm going to import the Hazel file. Tell it to import. It takes just a minute for that uh, operation to complete, and you get this dialog box that says import import operation in progress. So we'll wait for that to complete just a second. When the operation is complete, you will see the document properties box open up with the title of the, of the file. Um, files are given the same name as you, ha as you had them labeled when you imported them, but of course here in this name box, you could actually change that if you'd like to. I'm going to leave that name just the same and put uh, a description. I'm going to type in survey from backpack study. I can give it a description. When I click done at the bottom of that box, then it is fully imported. Now, that's one way to import, but it's not the easiest way. Um, the easiest way is even much simpler than that, and that is to come find your file on the desktop. And this time I'm going to import the Leslie file. And you just drag and drop it onto list view. That, of course, is the easiest way to do it. And you can import multiple files if you'd like. The same exact 
uh, dialog boxes come up, import operation in progress, and we're going to see the document properties box again, uh, giving me an opportunity to type in a description if I'd like to. So backpack survey and um, click done and it's imported. Now um, I've created previously two different folders under files because I like to keep my different uh, types of data sources in their own folder but you could create a many different kinds of subfolders if you'd like. So I've created a journal subfolder and a survey sub subfolder. I have one more type of data source, which is video data, and I'd like to create a file, a file subfolder for that. So this is where right-click is your very best friend. So if I click on files, the, the top level of um, this file folder system, and if I will uh, right click or control click for Mac folks, I get a little action menu. And this um, control click works in almost every place in, in the program. So, you, you know, you always want to try control click. It saves you from having to dig through these menus and try to remember where you're going to find how do you create a new folder. Though, I can tell you, you could create a new folder from the Create tab. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do it the easy way by with our control click action menu. So I'm going to click New Folder. I get a folder properties box, um, which I'm going to label video data. And you see that it's created the new subfolder right here. So I'm going to open the subfolder. Um, and now I've got it open. And of course, there's nothing in this in list view because there are no there's no video data there. I just created it. So I'm going to pull over. Uh, my first video, which is the Diana assessment video, and we get the same kind of import operation in progress message. It takes just a minute um, for it to load. It would get our video. Now we have our video properties box. It recognized it as a video um, as we were importing, and I'll type in a description. Bright start assessment. Click done. And that import process is available now. We and then obviously you can see the Diana video um, right here in detail view, just like we saw the text of, of documents in detail view. So we've got navigation view, list view, and detail view. List view will always have the list of all the items in a particular category, like all the surveys, all the journal titles. Um, you can you also see your codes here, um, and this is very helpful because when you're working on a document that you want to code, you can see the codes and code right to them, uh, you know, right next door here. So um, I guess the only other thing to say is, you know, how do we look at the files that we have already entered into the program? So you just double click on them. So I'm looking at codes, and we're seeing the references that I've coded to this particular listen to child code. Uh, here's like about book. I can double click. I can see the references that I've coded there. If I want to look at the actual um, files, I can look at the surveys. I can ha I look in list view. Here's a list of all my surveys, and I double click. And again, as we said before, all the open items are listed right here. So I've got files open. The, the Denise, the Hazel, the Leslie file. There's my Diana assessment video. I can move between that. Here are some nodes that I'm, I'm browsing that are open. Um, and then again, here's the, the backpack survey that I, just or, that I just opened last. So I can clean that up, closing the ones that I no longer need. And that's how you get started with importing files and browsing them.